Okay, so let's uh, continue on just with this side. So you don't have to draw out this diagram, but this is kind of general knowledge, but you do need to know it. Okay, it's very important. They always ask about the impacts of energy consumption. So what are the environmental impacts from us using all of this energy? Now, this diagram is fairly simple. You have global impacts, local impacts, and then regional. So this would be like New Providence, Bahamas, world, okay? Or for me, it would be Ireland, Europe, world. Now, you can see renewable energy really only has local impacts. That's why it's the better option. Nuclear energy, our recyclable, has local and regional, whereas fossil fuels have effects on the th three different scales, all right? So, obviously, the global one from fossil fuels is producing carbon dioxide, causing climate change, okay? That's the big one, okay? These two don't really cause climate change. Fossil fuels also look air pollution, acid rain, so on. Nuclear power can have accidents or leaks, all right, which can be bad for the country. In the local scale, on the smaller scale then, they all have impacts, even renewable energy flooding the land first. So if you want to use hydroelectric power, you need to flood the land. We're going to look at that in a little bit. Okay. Um, deforestation, damage to habitats for all of them, oil leaks from fossil fuels, landscapes are left with big scars from mining and so on. So all of these will have some impacts. I don't want you thinking renewables have no, no disadvantages. They do. All right. But as you can see, fossil fuels have by far and away the most. Uh, now, um, we're going to look at some alternative energy sources now, all right? So I have a flag here for uh, Iceland and Paraguay, and they're quite unique because Iceland gets all of its energy from geothermal energy. It doesn't use any fossil fuels, and Paraguay only uses hydroelectric power. So technically, neither of these countries produce any uh, carbon dioxide or bad gases from producing energy okay it's all done naturally so we're going to use page 122 and 125 of the new wider world uh, to explore these case studies okay so have a highlighter ready and your pen okay so page 122 very quickly i'm going to go through these okay so hydroelectricity generates the highest proportion of renewable energy okay so of all the renewable energy types hydroelectricity is the best so again little picture here You've got the river used to flow down like this, all right? We build a dam across it. You can see this huge big reservoir, okay? Or which is the name for a man-made fake lake. And then the river flows through here and we can generate electricity from it, okay? Um, advantages, disadvantages, I have three of each. So one, two, and three. Okay, it's renewable energy, all right? Um, relatively cheap form of electricity. Once you've built the dam, there's no other real cost, so it's quite cheap. And it reduces the risk of flooding and water shortages. So it reduces flooding further down the river and it makes a big natural well of water. All right. The disadvantages though, dams are very expensive. So they cost millions of dollars to build this. Flooding uh, forces people and animals to move. So all of this land, if you lived there, you were forced out of your home. And also there's always the possibility that the dam will collapse. Okay, one happened in Brazil only last year. So this can collapse and then you get this huge big tidal wave, or, well, big tsunami almost, flooding down into your towns. All right, so advantages, disadvantages. I've also added up here, not Bahamas. This is not something that we can use because A, we don't have mountains and B, we don't have rivers. So we don't have the option of this, okay? All right, top of the next page, one, two, three. We're looking at geothermal energy. Um, it means heat from the earth, essentially, geo and thermal, all right? Heat is stored in magma in the rocks beneath the earth's surface, all right? So in areas that are near, in volcanic areas like Iceland or New Zealand, there's your two examples, heated rocks are near to the surface, okay? The water seeps down towards the cracks and the cavities where it's heated, all right? In some areas of known heated rock, all right, what we do is we pump down cold water into the, into the, into the ground, and then it heats up naturally because it's close to the magma and then we return it to the surface usually as steam okay now as that steam comes back up it turns turbines and makes energy advantages it's really renewable okay and it is completely pollution free 
relatively pollution free right the disadvantage is the high cost of construction you have to drill these massive big boreholes all right and it is limited to volcanic areas okay now again i put up here not bahamas because we are not a volcanic area so we can't use this type one problem is it does produce sulfuric gases which can be kind of poisonous all right now what this little diagram here kind of explains it all right so here's the magma it's quite shallow the crust is quite thin okay you pump down cold water it gets heated up and turns into steam or hot water it's pumped back up and it generates energy up here okay so that's geothermal okay on to the next page one two four wind energy and now i put bahamas question mark question mark because there is the potential for us to use wind energy okay so this just talks about the uk but again it's the same everywhere you install these wind turbines you're going to get the same results okay so wind turbines to sorry to be at their most efficient need to be in areas with high and regular wind speeds all right now stay with me on this one exposed coasts or upland areas are more of more remote parts of western britain okay so as 50 meter high turbines are expensive to build and maintain it is an advantage to uh, to group a minimum of 25 of the machines together to make a what we call a wind farm now we don't have any high land here in the bahamas but we certainly have exposed coasts and you can build these turbines out at sea right the blue dot actually over here shows where ones have been built in the ocean since then in this channel all down this side of ireland here all right let me draw where i'm from okay i'm from just here all along here are hundreds of wind turbines out in the ocean okay they're built on big foundations and the ocean is far more windy now we could harness this wind i know the hurricanes would probably come and damage the turbines but it is a possibility that we could use it down here as well very quickly okay we got advantages uh relatively safe okay it doesn't give off any bad emissions minimal effect on local ecosystems all right after the initial expense of building the wind farm it's very very cheap so once you get the turbines built it's very very cheap to to get the energy disadvantages wind doesn't blow all the time so you do not have a steady flow of energy now you can store energy in batteries but again that is a disadvantage uh, groups of 30 meter tall or 25 meter tall wind turbines spoil the attraction of certain areas so again that would be an issue in the bahamas because we don't want the views being ruined by these huge turbines one thing they do do as well is wind farms are noisy and give off a lot of noise pollution all right therefore people do, don't want them near their houses and stuff like that okay there was a thing in england called nimby not in my backyard because people wanted wind turbines but then when it came to building them nobody wanted them near their house because of the noise and it reduced the value of your house okay so that's the advantages disadvantages of wind one more okay so then solar energy and again bahamas i think we should really be trying to make more use of our solar energy all right solar panels can be used to generate electricity through solar panels and photo -phyletic, phyletic cells okay is the advantage of being safe it's pollution free it's efficient okay and limitless in supply as long as the sun is out we can make make energy and we know how much the sun shines here and um, disadvantages is what i've written here okay so in the winter when demand is highest and uh, when the uk gets most cloud shorter hours of daylight when it does not shine the sun is at a lower angle in the sky okay so that's with the uk but for us we get definitely get enough sunlight or heat year round okay um so again you can see here potential is far greater in countries many of which lie in the warmer sunnier tropics okay so again solar panels are expensive to uh, install all right but once installed again they last a long time you can put them on the roofs we can put them on building any buildings make any open space we can start to install them and it would take a huge amount of debt off of the Bahamian government, okay?